Hi everyone, Michigan1777 here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. You know, I'm gonna talk today primarily about mini LED TVs and OLED TVs. I have spent probably the last hour and a half to two hours trying to record this video. And my camera keeps overheating, so this has been getting a little bit frustrating, but I wanna put this video out because I feel like there's a lot of people in this TV community who feel like I do. We are very busy crowning kings. We're busy, busy trying to find the perfect technology when we have two technologies that are imperfect. So let's get into it. Um, mini LEDs and OLEDs. I have the Sony A90J. I have a Sony X930E upstairs. And my eye is drawn toward that X930E more than it is the A90J even though I use the A90J more. You might be saying to yourself, how is that possible? That makes no sense when the X930E is an edge-lit LED TV. It was, it's not even mini LED, and you have an OLED in front of you. And it's simple, it's brightness. And I know people bring up brightness all the time. But I think the perception of brightness, it needs to be discussed more because it's not about necessarily the view, necessarily the viewing conditions, okay? I get it, you have a window behind you, you know, you have uh, light sources around you, you want a brighter TV. That is the very surface level way of looking at things. We need to think about it. We need to look at our eyes and say, what draws your eye? Is it a window or is it a painting? I'm gonna start off with the painting, all right? I look at an OLED like a painting. It is very detailed, granular detail. You got the contrast, you got, you know, the perfect black levels, you have color that just pops off the screen. It's very intentional with the way that it does things. And it just has that really nice painting style look to it almost, that really, you know, fine intentional detail. And then you have an LED TV. I look out a window and I say, man, look at the cloud in the sky. Look at the sun shining through, you know, the bright detail. Look at the trees, the sun hitting the leaves and you get the bright, beautiful contrast. And then the ornate, you know, color that comes from that bright sun coming through. This is brightness. This is what I miss when I'm on L a OLED versus a mini LED because for millions of years, as humans, our primary light source has been the sun. The big ball of gas in that sky for millions of years has been showing us our way. And this is where I think people defer. Do you like the painting or do you like looking outside? Some people want to go to that art museum all the time. Some people want to go outside and look around and see what's out there. And that's okay. I perceive reality with brightness. When I look at a mini LED TV, I say that looks like a window. And I'm sure for a lot of people that are not like me, or for a lot of people that are like me, um, you might get that feeling. There's a feeling you get when you look at a specific TV and you're like, that looks real to me. That's how I perceive reality. Other people in that not, might not feel that way. And this is where I go off <laughs> and talk about the other things that I have to talk about when it comes to mini LEDs and OLED TVs for gaming. OLEDs. Oh, it's the perfect display. Oh, instantaneous pixel response. The issue you run into with OLEDs when it comes to gaming is when you play darker games or shooters where there are a lot of dark corners or anything else, because an OLED struggles to go from near black to black, or from uh, black to near black or higher, um, you end up losing detail because of black crush. And then you might argue or someone else might argue and say, well, just raise the black level by two or three points and then you won't have that issue. Well, okay, so you bought this panel. Now you're already compromising. If you're a brightness person like I am, you're already compromising on the panel's brightness ability. Now the selling point, which is the contrast and black levels, you are also compromising on. So at this point in time, by raising by three points on the black level, why not just buy the mini LED TV with fantastic 
black level still that provide all the detail in the black areas. While it might not be as contrasty, you're at least getting the brightness out of it that you want on the full field. That is an issue. And it's not talked about when talking about gaming. You get the instant pixel response. That's all you get out of it. You get, oh, you get the fine little, the fire, the little twinkle, like, who cares? I prefer to look up at that sky in a video game and see that sun and go freaking blind. That's how I am. <laughs> I'm the weird guy like that. I love seeing that. I love seeing the cloud in that sky and you see the light going through it and it's just blinding. That's what I love to look at. That's what draws my eye. It's not the little minute pieces of dirt flowing in the breeze with light reflecting off of them. Now I'm going to jump into the next topic, SDR. When you are a brightness person like me, the SDR on an OLED is unacceptable. It's bad. I don't care what anyone says. It's so dim. And when you start putting in sports and you start playing games and you start getting static images on screen, oh boy, OLED falls apart real quick. I should not have to void a warranty in order for me to maintain the brightness on my TV. It's frustrating because I cannot tell you how many times I've been playing Madden, how many times I've been playing Gran Turismo, and my game goes from an HDR image to an SDR image very quickly because ABL kicks in. And as I said, I should not have to void a warranty in order for me to enjoy an HDR TV. Mini LED. When you go from SDR from a mini LED to an OLED, it's not even comparable. The brightness on a mini LED just far surpasses anything that an OLED can do. And for me, when I'm watching sports, I like that peace of mind and looking at that TV and saying, yeah, that looks real to me. And saying, I, it feels like I'm a part of that sporting event. Or it feels like I'm a part of that race or whatever else. When I can feel that way, along with my whole entire speaker system that I have, there's a peace of mind there. I like that peace of mind knowing I don't have to baby my TV. Now onto the next thing for me, the blooming part of things. We've gotten to a point in my opinion where blooming is fine. I, it doesn't bother me. Some people it really does bother them because they're watching in a pitch black room and I get that. OLEDs are freaking great for a black room and I am not going to deny that. If you are in a dark room and you want a TV that's going to offer you that just Mm, perfect image in a dark room. Yes, the OLED is the way to go. I'm not even going to argue that point for you. For me, I've got Gobi M1s above me, to the right of me, down my wall, up my left wall, and all around. And then I've got a backlighting system on my TV that is dynamic, so it reacts to what's on screen. And it also does the backlighting on all of my TV, or all of my uh, Gobies as well. So my whole room's lit up all the time. And I love it. Sad thing is, is I'm neutering my Gobies because my OLED can't get bright enough to surpass what the Gobies do. So I have to turn the Gobies down to no, nearly 1% to get any sort of competence out of them. And the saddest part is, is the OLED's maxed out. <laughs> and if I turn these Gobies up to even 10%, they overpower the OLED. It stinks. You know, I... I the... The way I describe a backlight system like this is it's immersive in its own way because it adds another depth of reality. When you talk about something like Dolby Atmos for speakers, this is how I look at backlighting systems when they all connect together and work seamlessly. It almost adds a fourth dimension or like a three dimensionality to your room and adds to the overall image on the screen as well. They talk about how a big TV creates a more immersive image. When you get the backlighting involved too, in my opinion, it's not distracting, it adds to that immersion. And when it comes to an OLED, it's just not bright enough to add to that immersion. Not the same way that a mini LED can because you get that color too, and you get that brightness. And typically the backlighting systems work better with those. That's a use case for me. That might not be a use case for you, and I understand that, and that's okay. Motion. Mini LEDs have slower pixel response times. I get it. The slower pixel response times adds more of a natural looking motion to the TV. Yes, 
in gaming it can smear and i get that side effect of the tv i'm fine with that you want the natural real quick pixel response get an oled you're gonna end up with some juddering more than likely you'll have to put on a little bit of soap opera whatever if that's for me personally i really like the soap opera effect for me it doesn't bother me so i crank it <laughs> sacrilegious to a lot of you now when it comes down to the creator's intent oled if you care that much about the creator's intent intent get the oled tv i mean it really is that simple because either way you'll just be able to tone map things down to where they need to be and if it's done right you're gonna end up with basically the creator's intent that being said, I firmly believe, and I think Brian has talked about this on Brian's Tech Therapy many times, the flexibility of image. I'm a very strong, strong person when it comes to this, that not everyone wants to look at a drab image coming from Hollywood. Some people want to spruce their TV up, and just crank, crank it on vivid mode and have fun with it. I'm not that crazy. I'm not going to be jumping into vivid mode. But I want that naturalness still that adds that sense of reality to that movie that I'm watching. So when I'm watching Batman on screen, I want it to feel like Batman is in that room with me. I don't want to feel like I'm watching Batman through a screen. That's the difference between some people, though, is they want that natural image or they want that creator's intent. And then there's other people like me who wants to feel like they're there. This is an incredible way of looking at things because I am also in audio. When it comes to audio, and I, I know I'm ranting a long time on this one, but I just really feel passionate about all this stuff. Audio is the same thing. Do you want that studio image or do you want that real life image? Because this is something that we run into with speaker companies, speakers like Klipsch specifically. People don't like that lively sound that project into a room and make it sound live. They say it's unnatural. It's not the creator's intent. They might end up saying, I'm going to go and get some studio monitors and then using those in two channel. And that's fine if that's what your preference is. But it all comes down to what you want personally. And not enough people talk about the personal standpoint of it. It shouldn't just be about your room conditions. It needs to be about how you personally perceive things and how you want to perceive things. And if we are selling TVs or talking about TVs, we need to take that next step forward from just saying what is your your conditions you are watching it and saying how do you perceive things how do you want to perceive things do you want to see a movie as real or do you want to see it as punchy or would you rather see it as toned down and more like the director says to be i know some people talk about that but there's aspects of it beyond that how do you view everyday life I'm just happy to have this off my chest. And after recording this for the past two hours, I really wanted to talk all the way through, make my points, and really open up this discussion. I'll be attending M-Wave in two weeks. I'm gonna get to see that Bravia 9 that I really wanna buy. I don't know what size is gonna be there. They haven't confirmed anything. They just said it's gonna be there. Brian's gonna be there with FOMO talking about it. I wanna see it. I want to feel that feeling and see if I feel that feeling again. Because if it's anything like Sony has been talking about it and how other people have been talking about it and saying that it is extremely bright, I'm going to be happy about it. I know a lot of other people will too. <laughs> but down to it, if you're a person who is looking for a TV with perfect black levels and that is your jam and they want the full contrast, why are you even looking at a mini LED TV? Don't bother. Because by this point in time, you probably know what you like. If you are a person who's never experienced a mini LED TV or an OLED TV or vice versa, you know, mini LED, I bought one and then I haven't seen an OLED or vice versa. As someone who's owned both, you're going to get benefits from both and you have to figure out what you really like. Because <laughs> if you get the wrong thing, it can get frustrating, you know? Final point here. I know I've been talking for, what, 15 minutes now. Um, these are memories you're making, whether it be with your family or by yourself. Pick wisely. 
you know, you're going to be spending a lot of time with these TVs and with these panels. So make sure they can do what you want them to do. Because if they can't, you're going to be running into situations where you're fighting with the TVs more than enjoying them. It's really that simple. Hope you all like this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. Leave comments. Like, seriously, I want to talk to people in this comment section about this. We as a community need to come together and stay together and really enjoy this hobby together because we don't have a lot of it out there. <laughs> Everyone out there thinks we're weird. So anyway, I've ranted enough. Have a good night, good day, wherever you are, and I'll, I'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys.